All right, so a couple things to point out in Allegro. There's obviously a lot of semiquavers in this. So in order to play it somewhat fast, you want to do a very small movements. So everything from your fingers not lifting up too high to your bow not using too much, because if you go like this, it's obviously going to take more effort and more time than to go. All right, so for the same reason, you don't want to play too close to the low half. Because physically, it's more difficult than playing near the middle. So just try to go really small. You'll be able to play a little bit faster if your fingers are closer. You don't press down too hard so that they can move quicker. And shorter bows. I just wanted to point out the trill as well because they've actually written on top exactly how it's meant to be played. So don't do too many. We're not going... It says... So if you count... One and two and three and four and kind of like that. So just practice that slowly a few times so that you know what you're doing there. And then every single time that it looks the same, for example, in bar 29, at the end of that bar, that trill looks exactly the same. So it's... Now in contrast, the trill that's at the end of bar 50 goes like this. So every trill that looks like that, so both the ones in bar 75 and 77, those are... Alright, so try not to mix them up because they are written differently. Now also for the semiquavers, there is a lot of notes here so I won't be able to point them all out, but just to make sure that they're all really in tune because they're going to go quite quick, try to think of them in terms of what chord it is. So for example, the first one, bar 13, that's a D major arpeggio. So it sounds like a major chord. The next one is an A major. Now there's a couple things to point out about the bowing here. So there's places where you've just done a down bow and there's another down bow, but in this case, because of the way it is, it's not going to be a retake. So for example, in bar 12, you've just gone and then so you go right into it. Same thing in bar 44, it's ending on a... So you can just go down, stop, and then... And that's going to be the same thing in bar 65 where you go... Now the section starting in bar 33 can be slightly tricky for counting rhythms. So what I always like to do is I count the smallest increment of rhythm possible, which in this case is a semiquaver. So if I count all the crotchets in semiquavers as well, then everything should line up and be proportional. So even for the rest of that first semiquaver, I'm kind of pretending like I'm playing it, so I never think of rests as being just nothing. I think of them as being a note that's silent, but that takes that same amount of time. So this will, I think, help you count into it a little bit more accurately. Otherwise, it's easy to kind of not know where to jump in because that rest is so small. Right, so if you go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So I, I hope you kind of saw what I did there. My bow was already on the string. I was ready to go. So I don't know, one, two, three, four. And then it's easy to start playing right away. So you don't come in too late, you don't come in too early. And also on that bar, because it starts in third position, I'm using the rest and the bar before it to move up. And I'm putting all my fingers down and then I'm ready to go. There's also a slight bowing thing in bar 42 because you're going like this. So you could do all up, downs, up, downs, up, downs, but I find it a little bit smoother if I go then down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down. So you don't have to do quite so many retakes and then your bow kind of stays in the same sort of area and you're not going to run out of space if you don't do retakes. Well, that's obviously just a suggestion, so if you want to just do all retakes, that will obviously work as well.